Today's video is on Gargoyle's Quest 2, a sequel to Gargoyle's Quest that came out on Game Boy. It's not common for the NES to pick up exclusive Game Boy sequels, so this is interesting, but both games are pretty similar in theme and mechanics. And confusingly, despite coming out afterward, being named the second game, and releasing on a separate system, the NES's Gargoyle's Quest 2 is actually a prequel to the Game Boy game, narratively. The games are spin-offs of the Ghost and Goblin series which also saw a release on the NES. But the Gargoyles Quest line of games are different enough to stand alone without much of an introduction to the main series, so let's see what's up with Gargoyles Quest 2 on the NES. This side-scrolling and sometimes vertical, almost always hovering platformer is one of the best-looking games on the NES and has a good soundtrack to boot. That could be expected for a game developed and published as late in the NES cycle as this game was. So as the story goes, you're Firebrand, a flying gargoyle. You were out training one day, I guess learning gargoyle karate or something, when your house was destroyed while you were gone. When you get back, an old, nearly dead ghoul tells you to go see the local king. The local king, turns out, is also on the brink of death but gives Firebrand a special fingernail and tells him to go figure out the mystery of the black light. A fingernail. Uh, thanks? And it's not just any old fingernail, thank god. No, this one helps Firebrand jump higher and fly further which is something you'll power up along the way and many of the game's hurdles come in the form of planning your jumps and flights according to how long you can stay in the air. The mechanic works pretty well, you tap A to jump into the air and A again when you want to hover. When you begin to hover, your hover meter down there will start to recede, and once it's all gone, you'll come falling down and can't jump again until you've landed. So, over fiery pits, it's imperative to get the most out of your jump and try to glide sparingly to the other side. This one has all the trappings of an RPG, but is an extremely linear experience. You do level up, and as you defeat bosses, they give you powers that amount to letting you jump higher and fly further, which definitely helps you feel how strong you've become over time. In the overworld, you'll wander from town to town speaking to the local folk, who are also macabre fantasy creatures. They give you clues on where to go and what to do next, but it's nothing you can't figure out without them because the world is pretty restrictive. There are only so many places you can go, and if you go somewhere out of order, you'll know pretty quickly. For a side-scroller, the game is kind of long, but for an RPG, it's pretty short, clocking in at about 3-4 to four hours for a first-time player. Thankfully, there's a password system here, so if you go into a town, you'll have to find the guy that gives you one. And if you die on your journey and lose all three of your lives, you'll start back at the place you last received the password, so that's nice. As you go, you'll also get different types of weapon upgrades. The first is just a regular old fireball, and then you get a more powerful boomerang-like weapon. There's another that lets you create platforms for yourself, which come in handy over those extremely long chasms with lava waiting at the bottom. There's another that lets you shoot a substance that allows you to perch on spiked walls. I wonder what that's made of. While the game is full of hellish environs and you yourself play as a nightmarish underworld creature, it's really not that difficult. It can be tricky to get used to the hover mechanic, but really, with three lives, the password system, and eventually a health potion, Gargoyle's Quest 2 is really forgiving and a ton of fun to play. If I had a real gripe with it, it would be the linearity. I would love to take Firebrand off the beaten path for some hidden power-ups or do some side quests. The overworld is really just there to give the illusion that the game is larger than it is. There are no random battles or anything like that to fill the space between. You can find things to battle though, like you can walk into one of these guys, which, sort of like Zelda 2, will transport you to a mini-sequence where you have to kill three dudes before you can leave for some extra currency. But that's all. I definitely recommend this one for several reasons. It's casual friendly, it's beautiful, it's pretty cool, it sounds good, and it's a ton of fun. As I said in the intro, if you want the introduction to Firebrand, check out the Game Boy version. It feels very similar and is just as fun, in my opinion. It might be a touch more difficult near the end, but is a solid game throughout.
If you've tried both of these and you still want more, then you're in luck because this was a trilogy that spanned three systems. The Super Nintendo received Demon's Crest and in that one you play as Firebrand again. It looks super gorgeous, especially that super metal intro. And gets pretty tough but has multiple endings if you're into that. It's worth a shot if this series clicks with you. Alright, that does it for Gargoyles Quest 2 on the NES. Don't accept fingernails from strangers. And thanks for watching.